Hey there friends, welcome back to another Let's Learn to Code Together video. That's not really what the series is called. In fact, this isn't really a series, but if it were, I'd name it that. And uh, yeah, let's let's talk about what we're going to do today. We're going to create a view in a SQLite database. I've yet to talk about that. It's pretty important. And you'll see why here in a second, hopefully. And uh, we're going to use this also in the future to use Entity Framework to grab some info from this view. So this is like a two-parter again. Uh, this first part here, we're going to create a view in SQLite. And maybe you don't care about part two. You don't care about Entity Framework. I split it up that way, so hopefully this helps you. And if you like this kind of stuff where I learn new programming techniques and different things in programming, and I share that with you guys, feel free to subscribe. We're getting really close to 600. I hope to crash through 600 and beyond, and I really appreciate it. And if you're interested in a standing desk, I'll have one linked in the description. This is the same standing desk I use in my, my own office. And I guess a prerequisite, something I use when I look at SQLite data and a SQLite database is this DB browser for SQLite. If I remember, I will also have this in the description. You can go check this out and download it perfectly free. And it's a nice little interactive GUI that you can look at different data in your SQLite database. You can create a SQLite database, you can add tables, you can write SQL statements and run them. It's really, really nice um, and really simple for a, a nice SQLite database instance. So that's what I'll be using. And I have this uh, I have this database that I want to show you guys what's all in it before we make our views so you know what our view is going to do. And maybe you don't know what a database view is. That's perfectly fine. I thought, well, Maybe some people don't, so let me find the definition for you guys, because I can't come up with a very good one off the top of my head. I mean, I know what a view is, but uh, maybe I won't explain it too well. And I think Wikipedia does a good job. They say, in a database view, a view is the result set of a stored query on the data, which the database users can query just as they would in a persistent database collection. So you can think of it as almost like a table, right? I can read from it, I can query it, and... It itself is built from a query that gets run every time someone references that view. There's materialized views. Those are different. Maybe I'll talk about those in the future. But right now, we're just going to talk about the simple view. And what's really nice about a view is if I add to one of the underlying tables that the view query is built off of, the view will update that. Because like I said, this query for the view gets run every time you reference the view. And hopefully it makes more sense once we have one up and running. But let me show you my data. I have two tables in this SQLite database. You can feel free to make your own couple tables and maybe you don't want to use the same data that I have. And I wish I could zoom in for you guys, but I don't think I can. So hopefully you can see it okay. Um, but I do have two tables. One is called cars, one is called colors. You can feel free to make uh, similar tables if you want or totally different tables and just create your own view that way. But here's the cars. So I have ID, color ID, and model. We've used this in my last video. And the color ID is actually linked to the colors table. So if we look, there's IDs, there's the color name, and then a false color hex value. These aren't actually real values for blue, red, and yellow. I just made them up on the fly. But here's, here's what we're getting at. So we go back to the cars table. And I look at Mustang, I say, oh, it's color ID is two. Well, I don't, I don't have to remember that, right? I don't want to have to remember that, maybe I should say, that it's color ID is two. And then I have to think, well, what color is, is ID of two? Um, is it red? I shouldn't have to remember that. Um, we want to link these two together. And yeah, it is red, but not all the users obviously <laughs> are going to have to know that or going to want to know that. So that's where a view can come in handy. We can combine these two tables basically in a query and use that query to create a view. And like I said, it gets refreshed every time you reference that view. So what I'm going to do is this tab right here, this execute SQL, that's where you go to run SQL statements. So you can see I have a select star from cars. And if I run that, it just retrieves everything from the cars table, of course. So one thing I recommend if you're going to save the SQL file, you know, and then use it in the future maybe um, to create views and create the same view. One thing I recommend is starting the SQL with drop view if exists and then whatever we're going to name this view. And whether or not it exists, that doesn't matter because what this statement does is if it does exist, 
it will drop the view. And then our next SQL statement will be let's create the view. Because if you go to create the view and it already exists, it's going to throw an error. And we don't want to see those errors if it already exists. We want it to just run it and not care. Uh, and let's call this view and VW. That's kind of like the style I've seen, at least in my own life. Views are prefaced with VW. Underscore and cars underscore and <laughs> underscore colors. Maybe that's pretty wordy, but uh, I like to name my tables or views things that, that I can look at the table name and say, oh, okay, I understand what's in this. So like I said, we're only writing this because if it does exist, and then our next line, when we create the view, uh, when we go to create it, if we didn't already say drop it and it exists, it's going to freak out and say, hey, this, this view already exists and give us an error and we don't want to deal with that. Now we can go with create our view. So it's pretty simple. You do create view, at least in SQLite, this is the, the command. Um, if you're using regular SQL, you could do something like create view or no, I think it's create or replace view. You might want to Google that, but you can do all of this in one line, but SQLite doesn't have that functionality so we have to make these two separate statements but create view whatever we're going to name it uh, we already named it here so I'm just going to copy that and here is where we say as and then our our SQL query so I can say select and then I'm not going to say what I'm going to select yet I'm going to say from cars and then join colors because I'm joining these two tables together because I need data from both of those tables and how are we going to join those where and let's give these kind of uh, aliases so cars i'm going to give a c and colors i'm going to give c o l and let's say c dot i think it was color id and yeah we have some kind of like intellisense here which is nice is equal to car or call dot was it uh id right i think it's just id and it's called special it might be a special word or, or whatever in SQLite. So let's call it colors, I guess. Nah, that, that doesn't make sense. CO, how about that? It's no longer yellow, so that made me think something was up with that ID. Okay, and now we can say what we want to select. We want to select from the cars table, c.model, and then from the colors table, co.color name. And yeah, it looks like it might work because IntelliSense is working. So I think this should be okay. Let me just hit enter so you can read the whole thing easily. And once again, creating the view. And then this part is the query that whenever we re-reference the view, we re-look at it, whatever, however you want to say it, it's going to run this again and, and grab everything recent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit not this one. Or yeah, I am going to hit this one. This character right here, this symbol, is just execute the line that I'm on. We want to execute everything because we want to run both of these statements at once or one at a time and it executes successfully already. So let's go back to the database structure and you can see now there's this new view that just appeared and here it is. Let's go ahead and just browse it. We'll go back to this and browse it and here we go. We have the models and the color names and let me just prove to you that once something gets added, let me add a new car and it automatically populated the ID. So let's just give it a color ID of one. And uh, I know Lamborghini isn't a model. It's uh, the manufacturer, but you know, whatever. Uh, let's do like a Subaru Impreza. I think that's how you spell it, WRX. And then let's save the change. We'll write the change. We'll go back to that view. And you can see right when I loaded up that view again, it ran the query and it has that new Subaru Impreza WRX blue. We didn't have to do anything and automatically did it on its own. That's what's nice about views is we can create a view if we already know we're going to join data quite often like this. Um, we can create a view to save us a lot of time. And then I'm going to show you in the next video how to reference this view in Entity Framework Core. If you're interested in that, obviously stick around for that in the next video. And uh, I hope you learned something new, and I hope to see you guys in the future. So don't forget to hit subscribe, and take care.